So good afternoon, good evening, actually, to our viewing audience. Welcome to a special edition of Spotlight Endometriosis. This afternoon, we have with us spoken with artist Darren Sandy, who has penned a poem, especially for the TTEA, by the name of Being Who. So we have Darren here with us this afternoon, and we're going to talk a little bit about this special poem that he did for us. Darren, good afternoon, and welcome to Spotlight Endometriosis. Hi, good afternoon, and I am glad to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. So, Darren, I, I want to, um, I first want to say that yesterday was the first time I had a chance to read the piece. And I want to say, just in the words of the president, Abisha, it was drop mic. <laughs> <laughs> It was drop mic. I I read it and I felt as though you actually encapsulated exactly what an endometriosis patient um, feels living with um, the disease. It was it was really really awesome and I want to I want to give you the vote of thanks and the greetings. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for um for taking the time to actually do that special piece for us, you know? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. So to, to, start, to start off the whole um, session, can you tell us a little bit about Darren Sandy and what he does? Um, Darren Sandy is a spoken word poet. I'm a performer. Um, I was once a secondary school teacher. And um, well, my daughter is here making some noise, but this is Zoom, eh? this, is, this is Zoom, buddy. <laughs> people, this is where you had to get. Um, yep, yep, welcome. <laughs> um, as a secondary school teacher, and I left that at the end of 2013, not because I didn't like the job, but primarily because I realized that the, the talent that I had, I wanted to spread it and share it as much as I could. So I kind of took a leap of faith, so to speak, and mm -hmm. um, ended up taking on full-time poetry as a full-time profession. Wow. Um, and I've been doing that since the end of 2013 to now, um, by God's grace, even through COVID, etc. cetera. Um, so so that, that's essentially me. I started performing back in 2009 in UWE, UWE Speak. Mm -hmm. I'm always like literature and language, etc. I studied that at school, graduate and postgraduate levels. Right. And, um, <laughs> And it was, and, and I always believe in doing, doing things you love, you know, doing things you love mm -hmm. for your life. Um, because that, yes. me, that is what makes life worth living. Mm -hmm. And um, I just decided to pick it up as a profession and I continue to, to walk that trail. Kudos to you. And it's the passion, it's the passion that we have for the things that we love, which allows it to be done expertly. Yes, that passion yes. that we have inside. So kudos to you on taking that jump from leaving, you know, what the old people used to say, uh, a, a government job, yeah, <laughs> you know? Job, yeah. yeah, they like to say that, but you know, thanks, you know, kudos to you. Well, actually you, you, you answered my second question in your response there, because my next question was gonna be, um, how long have you been um, a spoken with artist? And you just said you started in 2009, but you really did it full-fledged on from 2013. Yeah. So I want to um, go straight into the poem itself. Mm -hmm. um, you have, you, you profoundly, as I mentioned before, the piece profoundly describes the things and, and the patient experiences sometimes daily. Um, the line, the, the lines that you have here in the fifth stanza, well, what would you call the man who tells the woman who going through that? You're overreacting to little mild pain. Take two panadol and sleep and you will be okay again. I am all guilty. So yeah, yeah. the line, the line, I am all guilty. I want to ask you, um, does that indicate that you would have had experience and an experience or experiences with people who um, have endometriosis? 
Well, I hope uh, I hope it wasn't endometriosis, but um, it was it was excessive pain and um. Men, men could be very dumb sometimes, eh? including myself. <laughs> um, and we tend to allow. <laughs> we tend sometimes to allow our own um interpretations of life to define life on the whole, yes. which is not necessarily the case. And I remember at times um sometimes before before pregnancy though, because uh, since she was pregnant, she doesn't have pains as much. But my wife used to right. have some severe period pains. And I used to be very insensitive at times towards this. Like, girl, what's going on with you? Because I know my wife as a, as a tough kind of person. Eh? Um, yes. You know, come up playing basketball with fellas, they can lash on me. So it's like, it's a period, cool yourself, my girl. What is it really mm-hmm. going on? Mm-hmm. You know, but um, even in writing this piece here, well, I, I'll send some videos and some material to read and stuff. And mm-hmm. I, before I wrote it, I took some time to absorb everything. Absorb yes. everything. Yes. And, um, I realize that it's something that we cannot comprehend as as men we cannot mm. comprehend but what we could do is extend some sort of empathy um, yeah. which is of course a great challenge for for a lot of men i imagine um because we only want to feel what's relevant to us mm. um so in All constructing right. so this piece was kind of i'm glad i took on this this task because it was important for me as well for me to recognize certain things about my own self and um really try to carry the story a funny story i actually try to deny doing this piece i try to avoid it i tell them <laughs> and the, and i just to tell you like i yeah. i told it could have been i don't know if it was a bitch or somebody else reached out to me and i was like ah do you think a girl might be better off doing this poem and i was ready it was fad what i think yeah yeah and i i was ready to <laughs> show that responsibility yeah. on one of the right, other right. poets that we work with one of the female poets and then it's only after I wrote the piece, I understood what she was saying in terms of having it from a man's perspective. I understood how important that, that was. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you, you with, with, with that response, say you just answered both yes and no, which is right on point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know anybody with, or at least yeah. I don't know anybody who has confessed yeah. to me that they have endometriosis. Yes. But yeah. um. I, I have met some people who have had severe pains during yes. that period and, they, and based on the disease, I guess these people might not have even gone to discovering what it is about mm-hmm. because I realize that that is a big part of the, the disease as well. People just not yeah. knowing or people being turned back by doctors and, you know, um, so yeah, I have met people with severe pains, but I do not know if it, if it is endometriosis. Yeah. Okay, great. And it, it's, it's, it's quite um it's quite apt because i'm jumping from the next question onto the one that comes after the next question because you just mentioned um men and their understanding and how they could be silly and um not very empathetic at times with things that they perceive to be minor so i want to ask and, and, and even though you mentioned it, I still just want to ask and hear it from you, um, who you were actually appealing to when you wrote this piece? I think a lot of it was me first. Um, <laughs> you know, I believe in, in converting self first before I send out the message. So a lot of it was me. It was easy to write because I, okay. after watching the videos, I was like, yeah, this is you, Darren. This is you. And I, I am more comfortable addressing myself than other people. So I could go on to say that I'm writing it for me and, and men with the mindset as I have. Um, and also for women, for them to realize that, hey, these men actually probably they're starting to understand a little bit. Um, right. So, so yes, yeah, for people who come directly into contact with, with women, women and their peers, women facing any difficulty in this with this whole um menstruation cycle and the yeah. complex process of what is a woman's anatomy um so right. that, that so that's what the poem is for anybody who could access access it from those angles right i think will will the poem will resonate with those people okay great thanks um you mentioned empathy when um describing men and their emotions just now 
So I'm going back to my next the question that came um, prior, before that one. What were some of the thoughts and uh, emotions you were feeling? Why not? I know you said you never really met someone who would have said, hey, I have, I have endo. But from what you said just now, it could be a suspicion based on the symptoms that you would have been experiencing from your wife or whoever at the time, right? So tell me, while writing it, what were some of the um, thoughts going through your head? What were some of the emotions that you were feeling? Did you um, go back to the time when your wife was getting those pains and so on to actually, you know, what, what were you feeling? What were your thoughts? Um, I definitely went back to, uh, there was disappointment in myself, obviously, um, necessary disappointment, I'll call it, mm -hmm. because I just wanted to try to stay true and stay honest to what I was hearing in the videos that I watched. I watched a short film, I think it was, mm -hmm. and they, then I just ended up watching a, a series of other things, you know, YouTube algorithm with, yeah. um, so I was trying to stay honest to the, the stories of the women and I was trying to keep my head there. I was like, this is what they are feeling. And then obviously I had my own experiences to balance that next to. So it was like those two things, they weren't matching my responses to that pain and what I was hearing wasn't matching. So now I, was, I started to think, okay, so why weren't you hearing this before? Yes. You know, and um, that is where the disappointment came. Okay. In terms of it was this clear, it was live in front of me. Why now? But then, then poetry, poetry kind of works different with me in terms of, I guess, poetry kind of helps me to understand life better. So even when I write about certain things, I tend to understand it more than even just an experience of it. And that is why I always share pe with people that poetry, especially performance poetry, is so powerful in if you allow it to, to affect you in certain ways. And, okay. um, you know, it was all about, but by the time I finished this poem, I say, okay, this is what I have to, I have to be, I have to try to work towards this. You right. know, things will happen overnight, but obviously now I have a blueprint to like walk towards. Yeah. Um, and that's why I just try to keep my torch throughout writing the poem. Okay. Okay. So, so you're saying then, correct me if I'm wrong, um, your inspiration would have been your prior experience coupled with the videos that you would have looked at, or is it that the videos that you looked at was just a backup inspiration, if, if, if you understand where I'm coming from? So you had, so you yeah, had- It's a, a mixture of both. It's a mixture of both. It's a mixture of both that would have propelled yeah, you. It's a mixture of both, more the, but more the first one. Yeah, more the first one. Right, your experience, right. So that was, that was going to be my, my next question. Where did you get the inspiration to so aptly describe? Because your descriptions, I mean, the, the, the analogies that you used to compare what a woman would, be, what a woman would feel with everyday things that we, I'm not going to say we as men, <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> um, you know what, what, what people, when you, you compared it, there was an analogy with a construction site mm -hmm. and the pounding and the, the wrenching and the scraping and the peeling. And I, I mean, I think if, if um, we had an, a, a physical audience of endometriosis patients, you would surely get a standing ovation because I think it aptly describes how they feel. And as I mentioned before, sometimes on a daily basis, mm -hmm. you know, so you, you, you really, really captured that. And that's why we were saying at the beginning, it's drop mic because as I'm coming from a man, we going back to that point. Uh, that you were trying to make at the beginning, coming from a man, remember you were saying that you wanted, ah, this might be better for a female to do because she might be. But here you are as a guy that actually pinpoint, pinpointed every single um, emotion. We know every patient, every person is different, but I think what you would have written about 
it reeled everyone in 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 that bubble. Everyone could who has endometriosis could relate to what you would have um, you would have written in your in your piece. And we want to thank you, thank you so very much in a very profound way for taking the time one to be here with us um, this Saturday afternoon with your daughter running around in the background and all she wants her daddy time, <laughs> you know, and um, more so for using your creative genius to pen this piece that is not just for the Trinidad and Tobago Endometriosis Association, but it's for everyone, every woman, every girl that has um, endometriosis. And I salute you and thank you and want to allow you now to do your rendition of being who for our listening audience, viewing audience actually. All right, no problem. Thanks very much. And thanks very much for inviting me to do it. I'll get right into the poem. You're welcome. Period. Menopause. Monthly. Cycles. Get your Google Translate or Woman Bible. We men just to get it. And we ain't trying to. This poem is called Empathy. The poetry of understanding what a woman feels. And if it making you feel odd, then you ain't ready to be man yet. Period. You ever broke a wall? Obviously, men revel in reconstruction. Is a sign of power to lick back a wall, and nothing ain't wrong with that. So picture the first pong, the first crack how you put in your whole back to chip the pain, crack the plaster, and then hit the brick back to best creature. Remember the force fix on the BRC to separate it from the concrete blocks. Got that? Now picture that pain inside of a woman's stomach, endometriosis, a long word for excruciating pain, a period on steroids from uterus to the brain, a one in 10 dilemma, an internal charade of discomfort caused when tissues that supposed to be inside contorts themselves where they don't belong, causing long days of discomfort that becomes a woman's norm. The pain drags on. Now don't get caught in the medical jargon. You ever watch a military film? Yes, we men love the bloody war and we love when pain comes to the enemy without warning. Once I saw someone running and their ankle's skin was stripped on the tip of some barbed wire peel in the flesh, deep scrolling my blood and it was just a pain on TV. Now imagine that pain inside of a woman's belly, knives swelling on the inside is like somebody doing a surgery without sedation. The average person will call that doctor senile. Well, what will you call the man who tells the woman who's going through that? You're overreacting to a little mild pain. Take two Panadol, sleep, and you'll be okay again. I am all guilty. It's about time we males admit that we love the woman body. But we ain't no jack about the anatomy. If it wasn't for spoken word endometry, wah! I don't even know that word. But it is a disease that may hurl our favorite people into a different paradigm. The disease even leaves doctors blind. It is many times misdiagnosed because though it's prevalent, it hardly even known. It has grown into another woman thing that the world turns its back on. One thing about a woman is is that she seems able to bank on being doubted or clouted even when she's feeling pain. She still must endure. The thesis of the man's spleen, a man's brain, is unable to connect to the suffering. I try a wall, I try war, but I know I can't seem to grip the thing. Maybe I'm missing the concept for the answer. Maybe it's equivalent to a dreaded to banker, an emotional fog accompanied by a physical sludge of suffering. Maybe I come could compare it to waking up and seeing your car missing. But not even that could compare to the guttering of insides by the disease that reeks words from my teeth. Not even vocabulary could reach the extent. How about we just extend our belief to whatever the woman in our lives feels. So if she says she in pain, don't ask how bad. Or think about the last time you broke your hand and walk off like a man only to cry in a corner later. Give her your air, your heart, 
and then offer support on her terms. So if she a bit annoyed, then prepare yourself for some verbs. If she be a needy, then prepare your given meter to be burned for. I have learned that we men could hardly grasp the things we feel further for the things we hear, even if it screams endometriosis and our genes tell us that a word like that could only be hellish. Why not be God for once? And listen to the things women want. Maybe a lot of mystery in the disease is in our reluctance to hunt excuses for our lack of empathy. Period. Menopause. Monthly. Cycles are words that carry experiences. And it means that if we could understand that hurt, then we may start to know what it takes being hurt. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Try to clap my hands, my feet, every second to get the audience clap. Thank you so much, Darren. Thank you. It was our pleasure having you. Thank you, everyone. And good night. Thanks for viewing. Take care. <laughs>